Good morning. Who are we? Let us repeat that which we find on the screen. I am created in the likeness and image of God. Therefore, whatever God is, I am. And this is the truth about me. Last Sunday, I talked about giving and getting. And how the Old Testament says that we should give 10% of what we have as a tithe. But that's not the New Testament. The New Testament says we should give all that we have. Because God has given us everything, therefore we give out of the knowingness of our abundance. And if we don't think that we have, then we won't give. When we know that we have, we have no trouble with our view on giving. We give according to how we value. This is the important part. And what value we place on anything and everything in our lives. When we value something greatly, we are more than willing to give. In Matthew 13, 44 through 46, Jesus talks about valuing. He says, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And on finding that one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought that pearl. What value do we place on things in our lives? What pearls of great value do we have in our lives? What are we willing to do those or to acquire those? Jesus is talking here about the kingdom of heaven, which as he told us before, that we can live in this state of being, in this heavenly realm, even while we are here on this earth. So the first step to learn on how to live in this heavenly state while we're here on this earth is the undoing of the getting concept, which we touched on last Sunday. And, of course, in miracles, Jesus reminds us that the Holy Spirit's first lesson was to have, give all to all. Then he continues, I said that this is apt to increase conflict temporarily. And we can clarify this still further now. At this point, the equality of having and being is not yet perceived in our mind. Until it is, having appears to be the opposite of giving. Therefore, the first lesson seems to contain contain a contradiction, the first lesson being to have, give all to all, since it is being learned by a conflicted mind. Now, the ego's mind is the only one that's conflicted. The spirit's mind is never conflicted. This means conflicting motivation. And so the lesson cannot be learned consistently as yet, he reminds us. Further, the mind of the learner projects its own conflict. Remember, we do it to ourselves. And thus does not perceive consistency in the minds of others, making him suspicious of their motivation. This is the real reason, he continues to tell us, why in many respects... The first lesson is the hardest one for us to learn. Still strongly aware of the ego in each of ourselves and responding primarily to the ego thoughts in others, you are being taught to react to both as if what you do believe is not true. Upside down as always, the ego perceives the first lesson as insane because it can't conceive of to have, give all to all. In fact, this is its only alternative since the other possibility, 
which would be much less acceptable to it, would be obviously that it is totally insane. The ego's judgment here, as always, is predetermined by what it is. The fundamental change will still occur with the change of mind in the thinker. Meanwhile, the increasing clarity of the Holy Spirit's voice makes it impossible for the learner not to listen. For a time, then, he is receiving conflicting messages and accepting both. It's kind of like us having two canoes and one foot in each one. It's going to keep you separate and you're going to fall down all the time. <clears throat> His answer, he tells us further in the text, of a course, the way out of conflict between any two opposing thought systems is clearly to choose one and relinquish the other. If you identify with your thought system, which he's talking here about our ego thought system, and you cannot escape this, and if you accept two thought systems which are in complete disagreement, peace of mind is always impossible. If you teach both, which some try to do, which you will surely do as long as you accept both, you are teaching conflict and you're reinforcing that in yourself and that's what you're learning. Yet you do want peace. He's talking to each one of us now. Or you would not have called upon the voice for peace, which is the Holy Spirit, to help you. Its lesson is not insane. The conflict that we are going through is insane. There can be no conflict between sanity and insanity. Only one is true, therefore only one is real. Here's where the healing of the mind comes in. Here's where we invite the Holy Spirit in. Healing is a thought by which two minds perceive their oneness and become glad. This gladness calls to every part of the sonship to rejoice with them and lets God go out into them and through them. Only the healed mind can experience revelation with lasting effect because revelation is an experience of pure joy. If you do not choose to be wholly joyous, your mind cannot have what it does not choose to be. Remember that spirit knows no difference between having and being. The higher mind, the spiritual mind, thinks according to the laws spirit obeys and therefore honors only the laws of God. To spirit, getting is meaningless and giving is all. Having everything, spirit holds everything by giving it and thus creates as the Father created. While this kind of thinking is totally alien to having things, even to the lower mind it is quite comprehensible in connection with ideas. If you share a physical possession, you do divide its ownership. If you share an idea, however, you do not lessen it. All of it is still yours, although all of it has been given away. Further, if the one to whom you give it accepts it as his, he reinforces it in your mind and thus increases it. If you can accept the concept that the world is one of ideas, the whole belief in the false association the ego makes between giving and losing will be instantly gone. Let us start our process of reawakening with just a few simple concepts. First one, thoughts increased by being given away. Secondly, the more who believe in them, the stronger they become. Three, everything 
is an idea. How then can giving and losing be associated? You learn first that having rests on giving and not on getting. Next, you learn that you learn what you teach and that you want to learn peace. This is the condition for identifying with the kingdom itself, since it is the condition of the kingdom. You have believed that you are without the kingdom and have therefore excluded yourself from it in your belief. We think we're separate from God. It is therefore essential to teach you that you must be included in what God created and that the belief that you are not is the only thing, the only thought, the only idea that you must, must exclude from your system. We must repeat and believe I am created in the likeness and image of God. In a section on the Course in Miracles, where it talks about the lessons of the Holy Spirit, it says, Like any good teacher, the Holy Spirit knows more than you do now. But he teaches only to make you equal with him. You had already taught yourself wrongly, and we have, having believed what was not true. You did not believe in your own perfection, which you talked about. Would God teach you that you had made a split mind when he knows your mind only as whole and one with his? What God does know is that his communication channels are not open to him so that he cannot impart his joy and know that his children are wholly joyous. Giving his joy is an ongoing process, not in time, but in eternity. God's extending outward, though not his completeness, is blocked when the sonship does not communicate with him as one with him. This center right here has a real ministry. It is a place where people who are confused about who they are and possibly hurting mentally with no peace, no joy, that have only questions that really deserve answers can come and contribute where their wholeness is revealed to them. A place where you can grow in peace and support while you remember who you really are. A place where you can ex- witness or experience firsthand yourself miracles taking place. Miracles as defined, I'll remind you in a course, is when we quit thinking with the ego's thought process and start thinking with the Holy Spirit. That's the miracle. Your part might be one who enjoys the worship service, where you hear the non-dualistic teachings of Jesus versus old religious rhetoric. Or enjoy the beautiful inspirational music or a guided meditation that can take you to a different place. Or you might be one who enjoys the study groups where you can feel completely safe and accepted as you allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. Or where you can give service to the center by donating your time, your talents, your abilities, in any of the many ways that we have here that you can serve. Or you might just feel good in the company and the fellowship of others during our informal meal times or at the women's luncheons or at the men's breakfast. This center is an idea. A community where those of the sonship can come together to learn or be reminded of who we really are so we can live with the peace and joy that God intended for us. Remember, there are many parts. Partake of the parts that you enjoy while respecting the parts that others enjoy. 
This center is for all. This center started as an idea in the mind of one person. That one person then shared that idea with one other person. And then they both together shared it with me. Then I shared it with several others, and this center was born. Is this center a good idea? Is it good for you? Is it good for the community? If so, support it. If so, share it. If not, don't. Share it on Facebook. Share it with your neighbor. Share it with colleagues. Share it with family and friends. Invite them to come to a worship service with you or to a study group or just share with them what it means to you. Hear your personal testimony about what it means to you. Now, everybody has a personal testimony. So think about what your personal testimony is about this center. Those personal testimonies will always be able to be received from others peacefully and gleefully. Give this idea away and it will only multiply. Remember, if you share an idea, you do not lessen it. All of it is still yours, although all of it has been given away. Further, if the one to whom you give it accepts it as theirs, they reinforce it in your mind and thus increase its value to you. What value do you place on this center? Is it a pearl of great price? Remember, you will give to it according to the value that you place on it, and you will only receive as you give, for giving and receiving are let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the many opportunities we have every minute of every day to help Jesus in the expanding of his message that he came here to bring to us. We give thanks that we have the constant presence and the assistance and the knowingness of the Holy Spirit to guide us, to lead us every second of every day. That Spirit is closer to us than our very breath. It is always with us. We give thanks that that Spirit reminds us of what truth is and what falsehood is and to teach us to make the choice for truth which only comes from your spirit. And for this, dear God, we say thank you. Amen. 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 Will the ushers come forward? <clears throat>